Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today. I hope you are having a blessed day. And as always, I want to give thanks to all my dedicated subscribers. And if you are new to my channel, I hope that you do find my messages uh, very encouraging. I also hope that they will help you to build your faith during your walk with Christ. And the message today, um, I did receive this from the Holy Spirit as the messages that I do put out I, I ensure that the Holy Spirit does want me to share them. And I understand that right now, many of you are waiting for your breakthrough, waiting to step out of that wilderness season. And so the Holy Spirit just put it upon my heart to share these key things to take heed of this season. And so I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, one of them is to stay in alignment with the truth of God's word and his laws. Now, I understand that we, we tend to allow the, the troubles of this world to, to take the best of us at times, but God wants to remind you to trust in Him and to, to feed in His Word and, and to truly walk into obedience with Him in His, in, in His Word. So the reason why we may ask why we are stuck in the wilderness season or why we cannot hear the voice of God or why it seems to be difficult to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit I will, I will be direct, and the Holy Spirit wants me to be a little bit bolder in this message, and this is because we are not walking in obedience to God's Word. We are still continuing to sin, um, and we're not really putting our full focus on God. So these things really prevent us from, from hearing the voice of God, from because one way to hear the voice of God, and the main way that you hear God's voice is directly through His Word of Truth, which is why... It is so crucial to stay in alignment with God's truth and keep your focus on the Lord during this time. And this is the, this message is especially for those who are who are waiting to get out of this wilderness season, who are waiting to break through, who are waiting for God's calling upon their life. And this is one way that will help you because all that we do, we must do for God and. The, the more we draw near to God, the more that he is going to draw near to us. And when we are standing firm in his truth, nothing can break that that covenant between you and God because you are standing in the truth of God's word. And um, the, which brings me to the next, um, the next um, key thing to do is do not break his covenant and do not provoke him to wrath. So as we can read many stories and of the biblical figures in the Old Testament all speak on them breaking the covenant of God, um, taking up idols for themselves. So that's another thing is you want to ensure that you are not exalting anything above God during this time. And this is a time for you to reflect on God, not on anything else. And like I said, if you are waiting to get out of this wilderness season, you need to lean on God. You need to continue to have trust and faith in Him and not seek other things or other other worldly counselors or peers for advice at this moment. God wants you to focus on Him. He wants to speak with you personally through His Word and through prayer. So when we are exalting other things before God, um, this prevents us from truly hearing God's voice. And this also does not please the Lord when we are not looking to Him, when we are not putting our focus on Him, but we are relying on the flesh or on earthly pleasures or temporary temporary fixes to to help us during this season to get through this the only person that can get you through the wilderness is God and Jesus was the greatest example of this he was tempted in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights in God's time by the enemy and he leaned towards God he was fighting the devil through the truth of God's word so this is everything that Jesus does and has shown us in the word is an example of what we are to do so if we are looking to get out of that wilderness season, we must rely on God um, and not anything else. And so um, ask yourself and reflect on this. Are you exalting anything before God? Um, so like I mentioned right now, uh, the devil is going to distract you. And most of you may have been distracted in, in various different ways. Um, and the devil is going to tempt you into sinning. And so you must always be aware of the tactics of the enemy, which is why it is so important to know the truth. And the truth is found in God's word on how to avoid to how to avoid the temptations of Satan, because we know that the closer you are through your breakthrough, 
the more the devil is going to come in and tempt you into sinning against God. And so beware of even intrusive thoughts because the enemy plants in your mind intrusive thoughts and you must guard your mind with the truth of God's word. And also you must watch um, watch what you are, are, are listening to, be watchful of what you are viewing, um, where you're hanging out at, the atmospheres that you are around in your personal time. So just be aware of all these things, your influences around you, um, because the last thing you want to do right before your breakthrough is give any open doors to Satan to come in and tempt you into sinning. And so you may be receiving thoughts of lust or bitterness, um, thoughts of jealousy or envy, anger, um, even prideful thoughts, which and idolatry. So which is the lust of the flesh. All these things are the lust of the flesh. And we must avoid walking in our emotions, but we must walk in the spirit. And we know that our emotions will deceive us. And when, and truly, when you follow your heart through emotions and not the guidance of the Holy Spirit, this is one way that will lead you away from God's path. And so um, the Holy Spirit actually brought me to Ephesians chapter 4. Um, and I'm going to share with you um, verses 17 through 32. And this will kind of tie in. And this is a reminder for you to take heed of that you are to walk in the new, what, what they call the new, the new man. So you are a new creation in the spirit. So it reads, This I say, therefore I testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentile walk in the futility of their mind. So we want to put off the flesh. We want to ensure that we are seeking things above. So focusing our attention on God and not the things of this earth and not our problems or struggles, but remember to cast everything in the Lord's hands during this time. And so because keep in mind that God is also testing to see if you are trusting him or who or what you're going to trust in besides him, which is why it's so important to not exalt anything above God during this time or ever, I should say, during your walk with Christ. You should always be center focused on God. And it says in verse 18, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. So we want to be sure we are not doing any of this. And when and this is our is is what Paul is speaking of. This, this is what those who are doing who are not followers of Christ and you are new in the spirit. So you should put these things off. And so um, in verse 20, it reads, but you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in the righteousness and holiness. So this right here is what we are to do. And I know that it's a process. Every step is a process. It's a sanctification process. God doesn't expect us to do this overnight, but he does expect us to try and to seek him when we are in need or when we are falling short. We are to lean on God. We are to seek him through prayer. We are to read his word. We are to become closer to him through the spirit and not of our flesh through the spirit and not our emotions, through the spirit and not the things of, of that corrupt our mind, but looking to things that are above, that are righteousness, that are holiness, which is God keeping your focus on him. And then in verse 25, and this is very important um, because like I mentioned, um, during your wilderness season, the Lord will test you and the devil is going to tempt you. And so this is a reminder from the Holy Spirit. And it reads, therefore, putting away lying let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor for we are members of one another and then it reads be angry and do not sin do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil and this is so important because he writes be angry and do not sin because god knows we're in the flesh and it's normal to become angry depending on the circumstance or situation um, that is causing this anger to fuel up in your emotions. But he also reminds us, do not sin, because this is how the devil will get a foothold in our life. And so this is what we want to avoid, because the closer you are through your breakthrough, the more the enemy will tempt you with these emotions 
to build up in your flesh. And when we are being guided off emotions, we tend to sin, right? Because we are not looking towards God. We are not walking in the spirit. Um, we are not allowing God to work through us. We are not going to him to ask him for help, but we are relying on our own emotions. And anger is one that Paul is saying, you can, you're can. you going to be angry. It's okay, but don't sin. Instead, go to God and ask him to bring you peace and ask him to help you. Cleanse your minds and purify your hearts. And he will definitely help you. He knows your hearts. He knows that you are trying. He knows you are seeking him. And he is always going to lift you up when you fall. But this is one way that you also, like I mentioned, will give a foothold to the devil to come in and, and deceive you and, and tempt you into sinning. And this is something that we don't want to sin because we're angry, because that will always lead to regrets, depending on the circumstances or situation, which causes you to anger. You don't want to sin. You want to go to God. And then it says, let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands. What is good that he may have something to give him who has need? Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Now, remember that we are when we are walking in, in, in Jesus, we are walking in the spirit. And you may ask yourself why you may not feel led by the spirit sometimes. And when we grieve the spirit, um, we this is this is what it means to grieve the spirit, as it reads here in verse 31 is bitterness, is wrath, is anger, clamor, evil speaking. So these things grieve the spirit. And when we are walking in these fleshly emotions, we are not walking by the spirit. And this is why sometimes you may ask that you don't feel the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Um, you may you may ask yourself that you don't you don't feel led by the Lord. And it's so important to really take heed that God should be the first and foremost in your walk, right? Especially, like I said, if you are waiting on God for a miracle or a breakthrough, or or if, if there's something in your life that you just totally need help with, right? We are to lean on God and not our own emotions, but to allow us to be led by the spirit and not our emotions. And then it says, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And I understand that one of the most difficult things as humans is for us to forgive, right? Because depending on the, the depending on, I would say how much you've been hurt, depending on how long you've been hurt or if you are still going through pain, we are to forgive. And when you allow God to lead you, he will always deliver you from, from situations that you cannot handle, from situations that are not meant to be in your life. This is why you must always depend on God and lean on God for his, for his help. And when we do this, you know that you are definitely walking in the spirit. And when God sees that you are going to him in humility, trying your best to, to forgive and, and doing your best to walk in obedience to him, he's always going to help you because the key thing to get out of the wilderness or to become unstuck um, within your mind and your heart is to obey the word of God. And it's so important because that doesn't really get spoken of enough. And then we go to, we, we listen to messages that are what I call itching ear messages. And yes, we all need a little bit of encouragement at times, but there are times where God is speaking through you through storms. And there's times when God is speaking through you through the, the toughest times. And this is where he is testing you. If you are going to listen to him, if you are going to obey his word, because in these crucial times, we need the Lord more than ever. And he's testing your obedience at that same time. So um, just keep that in mind, keep this in mind. Um, I hope that I'm going to stop there with this. If you want to go back and read Ephesians chapter four and five, um, on your own free time, um, during this season, I recommend it because it's going to remind you on the things to put off. And you can also go back and read, um, in the old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses, um, one through 10 and also Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 28 um, was one of the very first chapters um, that the Lord led me to. And it explains the blessings of obedience and the consequences of disobedience. Because 
we we tend to forget at times that when we disobey God, there there tends to be a consequence that comes along with it. Yes, he loves you. Yes, he knows we're going to fall short. But when we are listening to the word and when we know the truth, we want to do our best to stay in alignment with God's will, to stay in alignment with his laws, um, to do our best to obey his word. And like I mentioned, God loves you and he is going to always lift you up when you fall. But if you are asking yourself, why am I stuck in this wilderness season? It's been years or it's been months or however the length may be. And ask yourself if you are walking in alignment with God's laws, with his word. Um, if you are doing your best to walk in obedience, if you are trusting him, if you are putting off the deeds of the flesh and walking in the spirit, because all these have a very important part to play in your breakthrough. And there's, and, and I just want to say it like this, that breakthroughs come in various ways. You being delivered from, from certain situations is, is a breakthrough, right? Um, walking with God is a breakthrough being revealed of something that was not revealed to you prior through his word is a breakthrough. And sometimes just being closer and closer commune and a deeper relationship with God is a breakthrough. So depending on the breakthrough you're looking for, it may have already came your way, but now it's, it's, it's growing spiritually, right? It's when, cause when you grow in the spiritual uh, maturity, when you are growing in the spirit, God is going to give you more uh, work, right? more things to get done. God is going to put more things upon your heart to share because the overall will for God is that his children become more conformed into the likeliness of Christ is to share the word in one way, shape or form with others to share the truth, to, to speak edification and grace because we are to be the light of this world and be examples of ambassadors of the Lord. And all this, you can, you could, you could count this in as God's will for your life. And so um, if right now, I just encourage you um, to truly go to the Lord in prayer tonight and ask him to bring clarity to your direction. Repent of any sins and let him know that you are doing your best to walk in accordance with his laws and with his word and to help you in any area that you may be falling short. I hope that this message uh, did encourage you and just keep in mind that the Lord is always going to be there for you. Remember that he has full control of all situations at all times. And when you trust in this truth, you will know that he is the only one that you need to seek for guidance. He is the only one you need to seek for truth. And it could all be found in his word. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today.